Hello, I'm Lucy from BookX and I'm here today with a spoiler-free review of The Institute by Stephen King. Hello, welcome or welcome back to our channel where this week I'm talking about Stephen King's newest novel, The Institute. It's been out a couple of weeks. It actually came out the same day as The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. So there were two huge releases on that day. I bought them both and I chose to read The Testaments first. And do you know what? I'm kind of glad I did actually because um, if I'd have read this one first, I think I might have found The Testaments a little bit disappointing because you guys, it's really really good. I mean, I always look forward to a Stephen King release. And when I said, uh, when I read The Outsiders last year, um, I loved it. And I thought it was the best one that I'd read of his in a really long time. But this one, I think, might be even a little bit better. I'll link to my review of The Outsiders down below and also um, to some other Stephen King videos that we've got floating around on our channel if you're interested. But yeah, should we talk about this one? Um, it's is set, well actually that's not the way to start it is it, it opens with a man called Tim Jameson who is a disgraced Florida cop who um, right right at the beginning, right up front, um, is on a plane bound for New York um, and his new start but at the very last mis minute decides to get off the plane and make his way to New York um, sort of by foot, hitchhiking, by hook or crook, just not on that plain. He finds himself in a small town called Dupre, which if you are like a hardcore King fan, you might recognise because it crops up in um, a few of his other novels. And it's like total back of beyond um, small town America. He takes a job as a security guard and kind of starts to rebuild his life. And for this first, I don't know, is it 50 pages of the book? The first little, little chunk of the book, you know, it's in a really distinct Stephen King voice. Um, but I was kind of thinking, where is this going? And it was that Stephen King voice that made me sort of trust him, that uh, he knew what he was going to do. And I was interested, but I was thinking, something's going to happen. This is just not Stephen King. If anything, it kind of felt a little bit... Jack Reacher, um, you know, the sort of military man, vigilante, working his way through America, a sort of drifter kind of guy um, in Lee Child's novels. And I was thinking, where is this going to go? And then we left Tim Jameson in Dupre and we went a really, really long way away, um, metaphorically and actually as well, because we then flip to Luke Ellis, who is 12 years old and by all accounts a total boy genius and the cleverest kid pretty much that ever there was. He finds himself um, in the Institute. I pause then because I'm like, what is not a spoiler? I've got to be careful. But he finds himself um, in the Institute, kidnapped, um, not knowing what he's doing there, but finding himself with a whole bunch of other children who have these psychic abilities. They can either read people's minds or they can move things with their minds, um, but they are in this institute against their will, they're being held hostage, and um, they are being subject to the most extreme um, and traumatic experiments, and they just don't know why. So they've got this trauma of being kidnapped, the trauma of not knowing where, that, where they are or why, um, and the trauma of these absolutely horrendous, shocking, um, wince-inducing um, experiments. They've also got this overhanging horror, this dread of moving to the back half of the institute. At the moment, they're in front half. Nobody knows what happens when the children get moved to back half. They just know that they are never seen again. And the next, I don't know, 300 or so pages of the novel um, is completely different to those opening 50 pages. And um, much more sort of classic King. And all the time in the back of my mind, I was thinking, you know, it's going to go back to Tim Jameson in Dupre. You know, it's going to tie in there, um, but you don't know how. And I was really eager for that to happen. But at the same time, I was completely lost in the story of Luke um, and the children at the Institute as they try and unravel um, and piece together the mystery of why they are there, 
what is happening to them and crucially what is going to happen next and it is really really nail biting in lots of ways you know king is not really breaking new ground um in sort of I guess the different elements of his plot so you know psychic children he's done that loads I mean loads of people have done that loads um you know the sort of drifter um outcast cop um the idea of experimenting on children and, and things like that but actually when you put them together because King has this amazing imagination it does feel really fresh and new and exciting and when it comes back together and the two strands of the plot um join Oh, it's so satisfying, so satisfying. I loved it. And um, all the sort of plates that were put up spinning early on, sometimes without you even realizing that it had been a plate that was set spinning. And when they all sort of are, I was gonna say brought down, but they're not brought down, they're smashed together into absolute smithereens. It is just, yeah, utterly, utterly satisfying. King has a style um, and he has a certain way of doing things and you know he has certain characteristics to his book which are books which are all absolutely prevalent here but also sort of you know prevalent in their sort of best examples of him I guess really so things that I love about King are the dialogue I mean it's whip smart it's totally believable and this book is no exception especially um, from the perspective of the children. I mean, not saying that he's done the children better than the adults, but I just mean getting children's voices right, I think, is just so hard. And when you read books where they're not like bang on, it just stands out like a sore thumb. But King, he's just got a child's mind in there and the dialogue um, is brilliant. The voice of King in general, just the way that his prose works, um, he creates these really vivid senses of place, um, and um, makes things that basically should be completely unbelievable, believable. He just has a way of forming language in a really simple way and only explaining just enough to, um, you know, make it feel real uh, without, you know, sort of giving too much rope for him to hang himself on that just makes you totally buy in to the supernatural elements and things that, you know, I generally don't, love reading about but I totally throw that rule out the window for King and um, because he does it really well so that's in there and um, what else does he do you know he takes ordinary people basically um, and pushes them to the extremes um, so people that we can really relate to he pushes them to the extremes and puts them in really um, out of the ordinary situations and sees how they react and that is here um, in you know, the best examples of the way that King does it as well. I just feel like he's really on top of his game in this book. I loved it. Political references are also there are plenty, um, which is a pretty normal King trait in his books. You know, I know there are references in here to Trump and Clinton and library closures and all sorts of like just little political bits of um, Stephen King's opinion that are dripped throughout that I know um, will definitely put some readers off. But I kind of feel like, um, because it's just what King does, um, and you know, he's not really shy about his political views, if you're one of those people that is probably gonna be put off by that, um, you're probably already gonna know that about King and maybe not gonna be reading him already. But actually, you know, the Trump references and things like that aren't, there aren't hundreds of them, there aren't, and they are kind of brief. So, you know, you could skim over them, but I can imagine if that's not your thing, um, you might just get a little bit snagged on that and it drag you down. The only thing maybe that I didn't think was quite so good um, is this again, you know, King goes for good versus evil stories, doesn't he? He goes for like classic good versus evil stories. And I did feel that maybe the evil side, the baddies, weren't quite as well drawn as the goodies. So, I mean, I actually love what King can do with character creation. And this book, you know, all the characters are so believable and so rounded. Even the people who just have bit parts, who just like kind of wander on for a little tiny bit, they feel so real. They've got this, they come with like one line backstories and you feel that you know them and you go, how does he do that? It's amazing. But he doesn't really do it for the baddies in this book. I did feel that I perhaps didn't understand their motivations and their justifications um, for their actions 
quite as believably as I did for the goodies. In terms of justifying actions actually, it's worth saying what this book is about. So I told you sort of the plot and the story, but actually the themes are really interesting um, and important and kind of make this book, well kind of elevate it a little bit actually. I did really enjoy them. So the central question of this book, um, as the kids try and unravel what it is that's going on in the Institute and Tim Jameson, uh, disgraced cop, comes back into the picture, we're looking at questions about morality, I guess, about your own personal moral code and about society's moral code. So how much um, we can justify to ourselves to look the other way. So when all life's tiny little injustices happen and we turn away, um, actually, are they compounding themselves? Are they turning into bigger and bigger and bigger injustices? And we're just um, willfully ignoring them. And what that's saying about sort of our levels of morality um, personally and as a society. And there's messages as well about sort of the cohesion of society, I guess, as well, about how lots of references to how we're stronger if we work together um, and what happens when you stop living in isolation and don't turn away and work towards that greater good. But it's done in a really embedded way in the story and the character, so it doesn't feel preachy. And actually, you know, it's not really being preachy. It is sort of just asking these questions about what our moral culpability is um, if we turn the other way and yeah how often we can excuse the little things before we start excusing the really big and really important things too. So they're sort of the overarching themes um, and the questions that are looked at as we've taken through this really compelling page turning story and I, I just loved it. I really really liked it and I feel like this year I've read, you know, a lot of good books, but not many books that I've got so excited about and not many books that have just kept me pinned to the sofa wanting to know what happens. Um, beyond like a respect for the storytelling and stuff like that, just like actually completely losing myself in the book and gripped. And this one, it does. I really, really liked it. Yeah, did I say about The Outsiders at the beginning? Yeah, I think I did. Liked The Outsiders, really think might have liked this more. It's great, go read it. Read it before the testament, you guys. If you haven't read both of them, I don't know why I said that because they're not really related at all. But anyway, there you go. They just came out on the same day. The Institute by Stephen King. Would love to know if you've read it, what you thought, if you plan on reading it, um, whether you're excited, more excited or less excited now. I'd just love to know. Have a chat to me in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite Stephen King book is. I'm always up for a chat. Um, thank you very much for watching. What do I have to read next? Oh, don't know. I might have oh, The Confessions by Jessie Burton. Totally different kettle of fish all over the place at, any, at, um, at the moment, but it would be great if you'd subscribe and hang around for that one. Um, I hope you're having a lovely week and I'll see you soon. Bye!